It's coffee time, it's coffee time, it's the one pot chef drinking coffee in time. That's the crappiest intro ever. Welcome to Coffee Time, the monthly chat show here on the One Pot Chef blog where I answer questions sent in by you. Now, if you've got a question for the next edition of Coffee Time, just leave it in the comments section underneath the video on YouTube. Okay, let's get into the questions. I'll just bring them up. Okay, first question comes from Bespoke Group UK and they ask, what do you like to do with lentils? Um... I can't say I use lentils a lot, to be honest, but if I do, I usually put them into vegetable soup because they like to suck up excess liquid and make the soup nice and thick and rich. So beyond that, I don't think I really use lentils in much. Not that I can think of. Hmm. Next question, Bambalotta. Have you ever worked as a chef or cook outside of the home? Yes, several times. Um, most notably as a short order chef in a restaurant. I did that for about a year or so, and that's where I picked up a lot of my um, skills with cutting down recipes and making them really quick, because obviously if you're making things to order, you don't have time to do things from scratch. You've got to sort of mix and match and chuck things in and do it. So um, I've also worked in food preparation and various other things, but that was probably the the main cook chef type thing. So haven't done that for years though. It's sort of, it's mostly a home thing now. Uh, I Bowman 64. Can you do a recipe with spam? Do you know I haven't had spam for years? It's funny you should bring that up because I was actually at the supermarket the other day and I saw the cans of spam and there was like 70,000 different varieties and flavors. And I, I was thinking of actually grabbing a can just to see what it was like. Um, I don't know. Maybe a spam omelet or something would be nice, or I don't know. I'll have to have a think about that. I'll add that to my to-do list. Um, Jack Wilkins, if your channel wasn't a cooking one, what would it be? Probably this, to be honest. I'd probably, I mean, I don't know. I mean, when I first started on YouTube, it was a cooking channel, and then I opened the second channel because I wanted to be able to do other things, like sort of just commentaries and blogs and things like that. So I suppose if I'd never opened the cooking channel, I would probably just be a regular vlogging type channel. So I'm not really sure. Hmm, pondering. That being said, everyone seems to be doing makeup tutorials today, so perhaps I should probably do that. <laughs> um, Rebecca Justice, what candy that you have tried that you like the most, put this question in the next coffee time, please. Um, so I assume, oh, okay. So what, what candy have I tried that I like the most? Um, oh goodness, I don't know. I suppose, and Americans find this really interesting, is that I only recently discovered this whole thing with chocolate and peanut butter together, because it's kind of an alien concept in Australia. And I've really become a convert to it. I'm addicted. I love the combination of chocolate and peanut butter. So things like Reese's Pieces and Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, yum. That would probably be my favorite for the moment. But my taste in chocolate and candy and things like that sort of changes quite frequently. So it's, um, ask me again in three months time, I may have an entirely different answer, who knows? <laughs> um, Big World Famous, can you do a collaboration video with Nico? It would be very interesting. I've actually done one many years ago. I did a cooking collaboration with Nico and I did it on his channel and I can't remember what it was called. It was something like the Great Aussie Barbecue or something. And I think we did like four dishes in one video. It goes for like 10 or 12 minutes or something. And I did a salad with chicken in it and I think I did a dessert as well and he did Oh goodness, I can't remember. I think it was like steaks and he did a little nibbly or something as well. I can't really remember, but it was a pain in the bum to do because like I live on one side of the country and he lives on the other. So we were sort of trying to transfer footage to each other and come up with ideas and it, it didn't really work very well. It would be a lot easier if we actually did it together in the same place, which would be nice to try and organize, but it would obviously require him to either come all the way over to my side of the country or me having to go all the way over there. So maybe if I come over and visit him sometime, we'll take over his kitchen and do a one pot Nico fest. That doesn't sound right. 
<laughs> Who knows? <laughs> um, Tiffany Howe. Okay. Ooh, posted quite a few questions here. I was wondering if you have Amish communities in Australia. Also, have you ever done any Amish-esque cooking? Love to you. Um, as far as I know, we don't have Amish communities in Australia. I think that's an American thing. Um, there are a few, I don't know how to describe them, outsider communities, I think, that sort of tend to keep to themselves. But um, I don't think we have anything specifically like the Amish. Um, as for Amish cooking, I honestly have no idea what that's like. I, I, I assume it's... Um, traditional farm style cooking, I'm not really sure. Um, it would be interesting. I might do a bit of research and see what they do. Cause I, I, to be honest, I didn't really know they had their own type of cooking. So I wouldn't mind having a read of that. Um, another one from Tiffany Howe. You mentioned that you like to read. If you could be a character in any book you've read, what book would it be? Oh, that's a bloody frightening question. <laughs> Considering the books I read. Um, no, I, I tend not to read a lot of, um, fiction type things. I tend to read a lot of non-fiction. So I read a lot of things about, um, crime, serial killers and things like that. So God forbid I should be one of those people. Um, I've just finished reading the Fifty Shades trilogy, actually, and I don't think I'd want to be any of the characters in there either, to be honest. But, um, <laughs> although, <laughs> if there are any offers out there from any Christian Grey types... Um, leave your details in the description. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to move on to the next question. Tiffany Howe, um, have you ever thought of doing a live video where we can ask you questions live? Um, I actually did do this in the past. I used to, this is like the precursor to Coffee Time a couple of years ago. Um, I used to go onto a website called Blog TV and... It was essentially like this, where I would just be talking to the camera and there'd be a little chat box with people asking things and saying things coming up. But um, I stopped doing it because the site was really unstable. It was very difficult to keep connected to it. It would sort of drop in and out. The video would drop in and out. It would tell me that it wasn't able to find the camera. It was annoying. And um, I must admit, it, it was the downside to it was because it was live... Um, you would get a lot of trolls coming on there just disrupting things and it kind of sort of spoiled the fun of it. So it's kind of the reason why I think I did um, coffee time like this is, is this way I've got a bit more control over it and if I get trolls, they're easily sort of removed and it doesn't sort of disrupt the thing. So, hmm. Uh, next question. Gerard and the Squad 8. Hi, David. Uh, I'm considering traveling to Australia on vacation, but there is one thing that scares the crap out of me, spiders. I do not want to be waking up in the middle of the night with a black Aussie widow webbing down my face. Please let me know if you have seen some scary spiders before and is it safe? Love your cooking. Cheers, mate. Um, I think this is one of the problems that, um, Australia has is that there is this huge reputation that we are just filled with these massive man-eating spiders that are going to crawl up your box of shorts in the middle of the night. And the reality is uh, that just isn't the case. Like, yes, we have a lot of venomous poisonous spiders and snakes and things like that, but it is nowhere near as bad as sort of it's being made out to tourists. I think it must be being spread around by people who don't want people to come to Australia. I'm not quite sure what the go is with that. But um, I've lived in Australia virtually my entire life. Um, I've seen probably about a half a dozen spiders in the entire time that I've been alive. And I think it's like spiders anywhere. Like, if you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. They don't, they're not going to crawl up your nose while you're asleep or, I don't know, nest in your ear or anything like that. It's just, if they come into the house, they come into the house sometimes, but it's no more than you would get in, say, Europe or America or anywhere else. So um, I wouldn't allow it to ruin your holidays. I don't think you're going to have any black widows covering your face in spiderwebs. I think you'll be fine. <laughs> um, Maggie12310. You were on fire today, David. Best coffee time yet. Oh, thank you. Um, I was absolutely love you to go back to daily vlogs. Is that something you would ever consider? Probably not. Um, 
there's two reasons is that I actually gave up the daily vlogs um, mainly because it was a pain in the bum to do. Uh, I was finding myself having to get up in the morning and then try to come up with an idea for a blog for the day and then record it and then edit it and then upload it. And it was putting pressure on me to make videos simply because I had to make a video rather than because I wanted to make a video. And the other reason I didn't do it anymore was because my daily life is just not that interesting. <laughs> the reality is that um, I don't tend to sort of go out to um, interesting places or um, meet exciting people. And I don't live with people who want to be on camera. So essentially it's all on me. So it gets boring after a while and it not for, but very quickly it gets boring. And yeah, so it's like pressuring me into making boring videos that I don't want to make. So that's kind of the reason why I stopped doing the daily videos. If I actually had a more exciting day-to-day -day life, I probably would. And I try to sort of make, um, when I go away somewhere, if I go on holiday or something, I try to make a video about it because it's something out of the ordinary. So like when I went to Brisbane, I made a lot of bunch of videos in Brisbane. When I um, went up to Bathurst uh, about six months ago, I think it was, um, I made a few videos about that too. So that's what I tend to do these days. So like if something out of the ordinary happens, I'll make a video, but otherwise I'll just stick to what I normally do. Um, big world famous, oh, a couple more questions. What are your religious beliefs if you have any? I'm an atheist, I don't have any religious beliefs. Um, what else do you have here? Uh, would, would you rather eat chicken in a chocolate marinade or ice cream filled with hot peppers? Rather have neither, to be honest. That sounds bloody awful. I have heard of the chocolate chicken thing. Um, I think it's Mexican. And I, I must admit, I've never tried it. Um, sounds interesting, though. I, I, I can't imagine that it would work, but... I don't know. I'm I'm curious about that one, but the hot peppers in ice cream just sounds vile. I, I don't think I could do that. That um no. <laughs> that sounds absolutely disgusting. Um uh, Tom Linard, do you have steak and kidney pies in Australia? Yes. Um because there's a large proportion of people who've come from the United Kingdom, uh they bring their food with them. And so steak and kidney pie is definitely one that's migrated over here. It's not um a common thing, but you do see it here and there. And uh my partner's grandmother used to make steak and kidney pies. She used to do them in these little ramekins with um sago pastry type stuff and do it in a pressure cooker. Um I personally don't like them that much. I I'm not a big fan of kidney, but um, yeah, they are they are around. Um, noobs fan sub, do you prefer to cook main dishes or desserts? Um, I'm not really sure to be honest. I don't know if I prefer one over the other. Um, I do enjoy making desserts. I think it's mainly because the inner fat kid that's become the inner fat guy or the outer fat guy. Um, but um, I, I, I can't say that I have a definite pro like preference between one or the other, but um, I try to do a nice mix of sort of snacks and main meals and desserts on the cooking channel. And I, I will admit that it, um, there is a certain satisfaction to making chocolate cake and cheesecake and things like that now and again. But um, that being said, I get as much enjoyment out of that as I do out of making things like lasagna or chicken schnitzels or whatever it is I do on the main dishes. So, yeah. So, I, I don't know. I, I'll probably say, yes, I do enjoy making the desserts ones more, but um, I think it's fairly even. <laughs> uh, oh, another one from Noobs Fansa. Who does the dishes after you shoot a video? Is it you, your partner, or are you lucky enough to have a dishwasher? Oh, Mr. Dishwasher. But when I designed the new kitchen for this house, one of the things I absolutely said from the beginning had to happen was we had to have a dishwasher. I've never had a dishwasher in my kitchen, so I wanted one. And that was non-negotiable. It was going to happen one way or the other. And um, it's the best decision I ever made because... 
instead of doing like three or four loads of dishes every day, because like, let's face it, I do a lot of filming, we cook a lot and do things like that. The dishwasher just needed to happen because like these days I can just literally pile everything into it, put it in, switch it on, and it's done in one load as opposed to me doing three or four of them every day, which for someone who's got a spinal injury, it's a pain in the ass to stand there in front of the bloody sink doing this every five minutes. So um, it was absolutely a good investment and I'm quite happy to have one. So I didn't go and get one of those extremely expensive space age ones that sort of meld into the cooktop or anything. It's just a normal dishwasher, but I'm very happy with it. Um, Nala Bear, 1987. What are your favorite ingredients and flavors to cook with and your ultimate favorite dessert? Also, were you bullied or at school or popular? Uh, love your recipes. Okay, um, first question was favorite ingredients and flavors to cook with. Um, oh gee, I don't know. Um, I'm going through a bit of a lemon stage at the moment. I like sort of putting lemon into things. I actually discovered this incredibly delicious pasta dish, which is like a creamy, cheesy lemon spaghetti type stuff. And um, I'm actually planning to make it as a video sometime next week. I'll be recording it, so it'll be going up on the channel in a few weeks' time. But um, yeah, so lemon's definitely up there as a favourite at the moment. Um, I don't know. I, I, I use so many different types of ingredients and things. I don't know it's hard to pick a favourite, but lemon is definitely a constant one. And as for the ultimate favourite dessert, I think everyone knows it has to be lemon cheesecake. It was my mum's best dessert recipe and I have can't go past it. It's just simply the best. It's gorgeous. Um, as for being bullied at school or popular, I think I probably got a combination of both because, um, yeah, when I, when I was younger in primary school and early high school, I was bullied, but I then... My family moved to another area and I went to a new school and I actually became quite popular at the new school. So um, I kind of had both ends of the spectrum there and I know which one I preferred. Um, next question. Mr. Butterworth24, what's the coldest day, not night, in Australia that you can personally remember? Um, goodness. It was probably... A few years ago when I had a weekend down in Canberra and I remember waking up in the morning and there was I <coughs> pardon me there was ice on the inside of the windows and that was something that I'd never seen before. And I remember opening the door of the motel room and going outside and it was absolutely freezing. I think it was actually like minus two or something. I had never felt that kind of cold in Australia before and it was absolutely horrifying. Yuck. Mm. Oh, why are you so good to me? Um, yeah, so that's probably the coldest, but then I don't actually live in an area where it snows and um, Canberra, while it gets very cold, doesn't snow on a regular basis, I don't think. But um, the local area where I live here on the central coast, it doesn't snow. So it gets cold, but you have to remember we come from a country where it can be anywhere up to 40 degrees or more Celsius in summer. So we're used to a warm climate. So when the temperature comes down, even by just a few degrees, we react a lot worse to cold. So if it suddenly snapped and went like minus 20, half of Australia would die. <laughs> Pretty sure of it. Mm. Uh, Sprint King 76. Would you read this script as a potential opening to your next video? Okay. Bread. A simple yet important staple derived from so many cultures around the world. Today I'm going to show you how to make an exciting dough filled with a powerful herb. I don't know where this is going. It needs to feed an entire small African village and yet make a woman's work in the kitchen very satisfying. That's right, we're making a huge dildo on the One Pot Chef. <laughs> I knew I should have read these fucking things beforehand. <laughs> you dildo. Insert Barry White music. That's it. You're sacked. <laughs> Next question. Um, 
I like Cookie 88. Hello. Um, did you see Magic Mike? No, I haven't seen it yet. I've heard so much about this and I've been meaning to go out to have a look at it, but then I have to justify going to it because my partner probably wouldn't go to that and he might... He's kind of the jealous type. So, <laughs> Channing Tatum. <laughs> I just purred, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, um, might be one I wait for DVD. So, we'll see what happens. But it does look like a very enthralling film, I would say. Rapturous and interesting. Papa <laughs> Yu uh, Yus. I hope I said that right. Who cuts your hair and how important is your hair to you? Since gay stylists are the best and are always well groomed and clothed, how important is appearance to you? Thanks, greetings, and all the success to you. Um, if you'd asked me that question when I was like 20 or 21, I would probably tell you that having nice hair and clothes and stuff was really, really important because back in the day I was going to nightclubs and things like that all the time, so I used to go... Uh, to the local hair salon and I would get my sort of tips of my hair frosted so I get little blonde bits which admittedly I look back in time and just cringe at because really it doesn't suit me but I was convinced that it did and I used to spend all my spare money on nice clothes and things like that but it really isn't that important to me these days. Um, the fact is over the last few years um, until things on YouTube became as uh, successful I suppose is the best way of putting it um, I was living on a very fixed income. Uh, the idea of spending $30 to go and get a haircut down the shops was just not going to happen. I didn't have that kind of extra money to spend. So I started cutting my own hair. I used a pair of clippers. Um, clothes, I had, again, luxury items. So I just had to go with whatever was cheap and reasonably decent looking. Um, yeah, so I don't tend to sort of splash out on things like that these days because I just don't think they're that important. I mean, I like to try and look presentable when I go out, but um, I'm not going to spend hundreds of dollars on a new t-shirt or um, spend $60 on anything like, um, I don't know, like a, some new hairdo or things like that. I just, I can't do that. Um, sort of spitting a bit today. It's because I had dental surgery the other day and I'm still sort of getting used to it. So <laughs> my mouth is still a bit wonky. So I apologise if that looks gross. Um, yeah, so it's not really that much of an issue for me with things like sort of hair and clothes and whatnot. I just, I'm not really that worried. Mm. I like Cookie 88. What is the worst job you have ever had and do you like black pudding? That's a good combination of questions. Um, I've had lots of crap jobs over the years. Um, when you're unemployed, you basically take whatever job you can in order to get money and put food on the table. So I've scrubbed toilets, I've mopped floors, um, I've done work as telemarketers and researchers and things like that, all of which have got sort of their ups and downs, mostly downs. Um, I think the sort of, when it comes to jobs, even if they're really awful jobs like scrubbing public toilets or whatever, um, it all comes down to who you're working with. If you've got like sort of great people that you can have a laugh with while you're doing this horrible job, that sort of makes things a little better. But um, I'd say probably in those contexts, the worst jobs are probably telemarketing ones because most of the people were miserable. They didn't like the job. I don't like the job. Nobody likes working as a telemarketer because you're just getting hung up on and yelled at and abused at all day and constantly getting whipped to try and, well, not whipped, metaphorically getting whipped uh, to meet targets, and which are totally impossible. So, um, yeah, um, that would probably be the worst job I've ever had. As for black pudding, um, I haven't had it for a very long time. Um Used to have it many years ago, and it was all right. Um, I haven't had it for a very long time, though. I used to have it like part of a fry-up, but I must admit I don't have those sort of fry-ups much these days. Sort of, I'm a good boy. No, I, um, yeah, I haven't had it for a long time. I really should get some, revisit some old memories. That should be fun. <laughs> uh, Mr. Michael V. Reyes. 
How do you meet gay people in a new area that you will be moving to? I'm currently living in West Palm Beach, Florida and moving to the Tampa Bay area and will not know anybody at all. I have no problem with talking with people or doing social activities. How do I meet gay people in a new area? Um, in my experience, I mean, if you're looking, if you're quite confident in talking to people or doing social activities and things like that, the internet is your best friend because you can go onto the internet and look up the local gay community groups in, say, Tampa Bay and see what's on. See if you can find uh, local community groups and activities for gay people and see if you can't sort of go along to these things and see who you can meet because those sort of social activity things are a great way of meeting new friends and things like that. Um, I wouldn't recommend using things like sort of gaydar and stuff like that because they're really not designed like gaydar and grinder and those sort of app type instant dating type things because they're not really designed for anything more than sort of dial a cock i think is the best way of putting it <laughs> um yeah so I, I would recommend jumping on the net and having a search for gay groups in tampa bay or the surrounding areas and see what pops up and if there's anything that sort of pops up in your interests, I'd go from there and see if that helps you out. Um, uh, Cheslaw Mayor 012. Uh, hello, David. Recently, I have been watching a lot of your videos on the American candy bars and was wondering out of all the American candy bars you've eaten, which one was the best? Um... Well, we actually touched on that before. I was saying about like the Reese's Pieces and Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. But um, as for actual candy bars, I'd probably say that coffee flavoured Twix. That was fantastic. And it was such a shame that it's actually a limited edition and they don't make it anymore as far as I know. Um, because that was absolutely phenomenal. It was the nicest thing I've ever eaten. And I only ever got to try one of them, which is a shame. And I haven't seen it anywhere since. And I've been told by several people that because it was limited edition, they don't have it anymore. So most of them have sold out. So unless the Twix people bring them back, it's not going to happen. Hmm. Um, next one from ah, Thunderhawk. Hello. Dubstep or post-hardcore? Also, I'm enraged this never popped up in my newsfeed, so I'm two days late. Ah, YouTube. Um, yeah, it's doing it to everyone. Thank you, YouTube, for creating a totally worthless sub-feed. Oh, rant time. You can hear it in my voice. Rant, rant, rant. Um, yeah, ever since they changed the sub-box on the front page of YouTube, um, this stupid highlights option, which now resets virtually every two hours... So even if you set it to everything and it shows all the videos, if you come back in an hour or two, it'll have reset to highlights again. Like, it's stupid. Um, I don't know what dubstep or post-hardcore is. They, I mean, I, I'm, I, I must be too old. I don't know what either of those things are. <laughs> is it, is it um, music? I don't know. Oh, God, I'm such an old man. That's frightening. I'm assuming it's music. Um, I don't know. Post-hardcore sounds good. I don't know. I don't, don't mind a bit of hardcore. Um, uh, Thunderhawk again. Can you think of a food that doesn't go with chocolate or cheese? I don't know. Fish? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want any chocolate fish or cheesy fish. No, I was like, I, I've never understood the concept of mixing cheese and fish. Yeah. Um... What do you think of people with stretched ears and other body modifications, including tattoos? Um, I'm in two minds. Personally, I don't think they look very good. Um, if people enjoy doing it and they think it looks good on them, then so be it. But I, I personally don't think they look very good. Um, tattoos are okay as long as they're sort of professionally done and they're not too over the top i mean you see people who've got literally tattoos over every square inch of their body and they just look bizarre like i just i don't get that like having a few here and there is probably nice and they can be quite sexy but um i don't know the the stretched ears thing let's it looks painful like it, i'm sure it isn't but um i just i don't i don't get it it's not something that i would personally do myself but um if people enjoy doing it to themselves and 
they like the appearance of it, then it's, it's as much like sort of having their own hair cut or things like that or what kind of clothes they wear. It's entirely up to them. So not everyone is going to agree that it looks good. Um, yeah, so it's, 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 personally, it's not my sort of cup of tea, but if you enjoy it, then yay. Meanwhile, coffee time. Mmm, it's going cold. <laughs> um, gee, Lamb to Jesus. Hello, gorgeous. Um, we Americans are always hearing about how awful we are from people in other countries or from those who emigrate here saying that we're too aggressive, too fat, not bright, selfish, indulgent parents. I could go on and on. What would you say the general reputation of America is in Australia? Um, I don't know if I can speak for the whole of Australia, but, um, and I, I certainly wouldn't say this is my personal opinion, but generally Australia, uh, Australians see Americans as being a little bit arrogant, a little bit conceited nut themselves because um americans are sort of seen as coming from the greatest country on earth simply because they were born there and a lot of people see that as just being a bit sort of like like come on <laughs> and that reputation is probably not entirely undeserved on the american part because you guys do sort of have a bit of a flag waving mentality which is a little bizarre but um yeah uh, i don't know it's a sort of I think it's mostly Americans are seen as being a little bit arrogant up themselves, but I don't think that there's a real sort of underlying nastiness felt towards Americans. At least I don't certainly have that opinion, but um, I'm sure there's sort of people who have those sort of opinions saying that you're too aggressive or indulgent parents. I'm not really sure what that's supposed to mean. Uh, but, um, yeah, so that that would be probably the general opinion of the Australian population. But again, I, I don't want to speak for the whole of Australia because I'm sure there are a lot of people out there with a very different opinion. So um, that would be that. As I say, I, I don't see Americans that way at all. I think Americans are incredibly hysterical. Like, I, I find them funny mainly because um, I think it's just the accent more than anything else makes me giggle. It's like, hello, I'm from New York. <laughs> That is the worst accent ever. <laughs> that doesn't even sound American. That sounds like, I don't know, chromosomally challenged. I'm not sure what that was. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I think you're all very, very sort of... I see you guys as being very smiley, very laughing, and that that's a good thing, I think. So, hmm. Uh, Nala Bear, 1987. Hello again. Have you heard of Laura Vitale's Kitchen? She's on a cooking channel on YouTube and makes some great desserts. Yes, um, she was in the YouTube Next Chef thing with me about six months ago or so. Um, unfortunately, I never got a chance to actually speak to her, I don't think. It was, um, I think she was in the other group because it was two groups of cooking channels and I think she was in the group with most of the Americans and we had a couple of Americans in our group, but um, I never actually got to speak to her directly. But... Yeah, she does some interesting stuff. Unfortunately, her videos are so long. Like, I say that in a video that goes probably for about an hour or so, but that's funny. But um, I don't know. It's sort of a lot of her cooking videos go for like 15 minutes or so. And I, I, I maybe it's just my short attention span, but I can't imagine sitting there watching a cooking video for that long. But the food she makes is gorgeous. I mean, certainly very, very interesting stuff that she does. So, yeah, she does some great stuff. Uh, Mr. Butterworth 24 again. Did you, Australia, hear a lot about the shootings that took place in Colorado during the midnight premiere of Dark Knight Rises? Oh, we heard a lot about it. It was on every news channel. It was on every channel. It was in the papers. It was on the internet. It was everywhere. I mean, you couldn't miss it. Um, horrifying, horrifying situation. It was really, that was tragic and, um... I, I don't know if I could, what what I could say about that, but um, yeah, we we probably heard as much about it in Australia as you guys would have heard about it in the US. Um, especially like when I noticed on Foxtel, uh, the pay TV here in Australia, that um, a lot of American programs like Entertainment Tonight and things like that all basically broke with their normal routine just to cover this story, which. I found to be absolutely astonishing. I was like going, wow, this really is a huge story over there. So um, it was pretty hard to ignore it. Um, Mega Changara? 
how much money do you make from being a YouTuber and where in Oz do you live? Um, I'm not allowed to discuss money. I've got a non-disclosure agreement with Google and YouTube, so I'm not allowed to say how much I earn. Um, what I can say is I'm comfortable. Um, so that's about it. Uh, as for where in Oz I live, I live just north of Sydney, about 100 kilometres north on a region called the New South Wales Central Coast. So that's about where I live. Yeah, it's a lovely sort of beachside community type thing, sort of temperate climate, lots of beaches, sunshine, furry little animals, things like that. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a nice place to live. <laughs> um, at, oh, God. Aket? I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that one. Um, I must say I love your videos, especially the American and British candies. What is your favourite drink? Can be alcoholic or non-alcoholic, and what's your favourite dessert? Um, oh, what's the rest of the question there? Uh, six wishes. Oh, if you had six wishes, what would they be? Oh, God, a wishes question. Um, uh, will you do more t candy tasting videos, and can you find old candy that were in your childhood and come back into it? Okay, let's, let's break that up. Okay. What is your favourite drink? Can be alcoholic or non-alcoholic? Um... I don't really know. Um, alcoholic, my drink of choice is probably vodka and tonic. I always love vodka and tonic. Everyone thinks it's weird that I drink that, but I, I just like it. I, I, I don't know why. Um, as for non-alcoholic, it's probably coffee. Is it a... Mm, num num. Um, a favourite dessert, we've covered that already. Six Wishes... I hate those wishes questions because they're just, I, I don't know, like, I, I've been asked so many times that I, I just, I can never answer those questions. Um, will I be doing more case, candy tasting videos? I will be, but I'm not doing them any time soon because um, I'm having some dental work done at the moment and so I have to be careful with what I eat. Like, if I eat anything too hard, I could end up, you know, causing some damage. So, um, I will be coming back to them later, but not immediately probably in a month or two maybe um as for old candy that i had as a childhood um i don't know um it's an interesting idea i i might sort of look into that one um aussie criminals hello aussie criminals i came across your videos by accident but they look like you had some fun where should i start with your videos to find out a bit more about you the couple that i've watched show you in a tiny kitchen so well done in there not sure if you've moved on since then uh i love your cooking best gift you can give anyone is a meal okay that's great i'll love that um as for the best videos to start to find out more about me would be these coffee time videos because basically they are just sort of people asking me about me and i tell them so that's probably the best place to start is just look on this channel for the coffee time videos um, as for the cooking, go and check out my other channel, which is One Pot Chef Show, and you'll find all of my recipe videos. There's something like, oh god, 11 billion of them by now. I don't know, something, something must be getting close to 300 by now. It's quite a few. Um, yeah, so go and check it out, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, Yoshi Sweet. Hello, Yoshi Sweet. I was just wondering, how do you store your leftover meals? For example, you said that you will purposely make big batches of spaghetti bolognese so that your partner can take some to work. How do you store that to be eaten out? Sorry if it sounds silly, I'm completely new to the kitchen. Uh, thanks if you will answer this. Um, yeah, okay. Um, basically, I go to Kmart or whatever department store, and in the kitchen section, they've got little freezer containers. They're usually about... I don't know, about that size, roughly, with a lid on it. They're plastic. You can usually get two or three in a packet for a couple of dollars. Um, I just, when I make the spaghetti, I pack it up into these boxes and put the lid on, shove them in the freezer, and then we take them out the night before and let them defrost in the fridge. And they're still semi-frozen when they come out in the morning, so my partner takes the box to work and... Come lunchtime, it's completely defrosted and all he has to do is shove it into the microwave for two or three minutes to heat it up. And it's great because you can do it with all sorts of stuff and so that way you get a bit of a variety of what you're taking to work for lunch. You're not always having the same thing. And 
it also means you can be ahead of schedule. So if you know you're making something like spaghetti bolognese, you can make a big batch and freeze some so you can have some for lunch or you can have some like a bigger batch frozen for another meal another time. So yeah, um, it's a good idea. So go and grab some freezer containers and have a go. Um, Tennille Hayes, you say that your favourite Aussie food is pumpkin scones. Uh, I too love it. It's a good old pumpkin scone and make them the other night, but didn't turn out as planned. Wondering if I have not yet seen one from you, if you could please teach us how to make them the best. Also would love to know where in AU you are. Okay, right. Um, yeah, we've already covered where I am. Um, pumpkin scones. Yeah, I could probably do a pumpkin scones video. I, I haven't made them for a while, actually. So I'll add that to the to-do list and we'll see how we go. Um, Sam Chef 18. I'll better check what time we're up to. 40 minutes or so. Okay, that's not too bad. Sam Chef 18. Rank in order of preferred choice. Chocolate brownies, chocolate sex cake, chocolate mousse, chocolate mud cake, or chocolate cheesecake. Goodness gracious. Do I have to rank them? Am I ranking them in order of preference of eating or making? Because they'd be different. Um... Eating, I'm assuming, uh, I'd probably say chocolate mud cake first, um, simply because it's just moist and delicious and I love it. Um, chocolate cheesecake is nice, but it was insanely rich and I couldn't eat a lot of it. Um, that's the same thing with the chocolate sex cake as well. Uh, chocolate brownies are great because they don't take a lot of effort to make and they're sort of very easy to eat, like om nom nom. Um, chocolate mousse, again, is really rich, but it's nice to have it now and again. So I suppose that helps. I suppose that's my order, I suppose. <laughs> um, Emmy Gallon, Hugh Jackman or Eric Banner, why? Um, can't say I have any strong opinions about either of them, to be honest. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Eric Banner, is that mainly, and it's it's probably just sort of me and my warped brain, but um, as an Australian, I can't get past seeing him as um, the doing the skit comedies and stuff he used to do before he became Mr. Hollywood. So um, I always see him doing his Ray Martin impression with the giant plastic dome head thing on. So I, I find it difficult to see him as anything but that. Um, Hugh Jackman, I must admit, I haven't actually seen a lot of his movies. I, I've not, not seen any of the X-Men films, which I know people are going to tear me apart about. Um, I never got to see The Boy From Oz. So I can't say I've seen a lot of what he's done. I remember seeing him in some weird movie and I can't remember what it was called. And he was like a soldier and he was a time traveller and... Something to do with Meg Ryan, I think. I can't really remember. It's so long ago. It was bloody awful, whatever it was. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, Cheslaw Mayer 012 again. When people send you food through the mail, is it to your home directly or is it to a different P.O. box? Uh, no, I've got a P.O. box set up, so like, it's not very clever to give out your home address on the internet. I try to avoid doing that. Um, if you wanted to send me a letter or postcard or whatever through the mail, um, it's One Pot Chef Show, P.O. Box 4338, Bay Village, New South Wales, 2261 Australia. It's also on the channel page, so if you just go click my channel name up there somewhere, um, it'll show you the address there as well. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, it's, it's just made more sense to go out and get a P.O. Box because I had a lot of people wanting to send me letters and parcels and things like that. So, and it's good because I run this as a business these days. I needed a, an address for business documents and stuff. So yeah, so PO box is there. So if you wanted to send something, you're more than welcome to. Um, Super Wizard of Roz. Hello, Super Wizard of Roz. Did you watch the Olympics and were you glued to the men's diving competition like I was? Hubba hubba. I can honestly say I haven't seen a single moment of the Olympics. Uh, I am not interested in it in the slightest. Um, I watched a bit of the opening ceremony, but beyond that, I didn't watch any of it. I just wasn't that fast. 
Um, why do Aussies say, how are you going? Do you find that strange? Not really. In fact, I actually say, how are you going quite a bit too. So I don't know. I never really thought of it as anything unusual. It's just, yeah, so sort of, oh, hey, how are you going? Um, I don't know. Have you looked at your toilet bowl lately and does it flush counterclockwise? No idea. I, I, I really sort of check the directional flushing of my lavatory. <laughs> Can you read out my comments in an American accent? Oh no! <laughs> I'm already going to get in trouble for that last comment before I'm at New York, so <laughs> you're just looking to get me in trouble. Um, uh, I can't, don't know how to say this. Is it Daichi9? Uh, what's your least favourite food and drink? Ooh. Um, well, as for food, um, mushrooms. I don't mind the taste of them in something, but I just don't like eating them. I don't like the texture of them. I find fungus kind of creeps me out a bit. I don't know why. Um, I'm not a fan of beetroot. Uh, and it will be a cold day in hell before I eat Brussels sprouts again. But beyond that, I'm pretty easy. I, I tend to eat most things. As for drinks, um, I don't know. I... Had somebody get me try Dr. Pepper once, and that was vile. It was like cough syrup mixed with sock sweat. Um, not a big fan of gin. I don't like the taste of that either. But um, again, pretty free and easy, I think. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, Danila Mihaila. I hope I said that right. Or Hila. I hope that's right. Romanian food. Are you familiar with it? I would love to send you something traditional from here, but I don't think that sending it through the mail will guarantee me that all the delicious things I send you will get there intact. Um, I guess it depends. Uh, well, Romani I'll start with the first question. I'm not really familiar with the Romanian food. I, I don't think... No, I, I couldn't honestly tell you. Like, I couldn't give you an example of what Romanian food is. I, I don't think I know anything about Romanian food. Um... As for sending stuff through the mail, um, if it's something like, if it's proper like food that's been sealed in a packet, like a candy bar or something like that, generally, as long as it's packed properly, it should be fine. It should get here intact. I've, I've had people send things before, but um, yeah, sort of, I wouldn't worry too much about getting damaged as long as it's not something that requires refrigeration or anything like that. I think you should be pretty okay. Um, yeah, so Romanian food, I, I have no idea, so it should be interesting to see. I, I couldn't honestly tell you much about it, because I don't think I've ever seen a Romanian restaurant, so I don't know. That'd be interesting to see. And, oh, <laughs> we're down to the last question, by the looks. Uh, Vivi Gerga, have you ever been to Malaysia? Uh, no, I don't think I have, actually. My father went there in the early 90s because he went to Kuala Lumpur for some conference. But, yeah, I don't, I don't think I've ever been there, no. Somewhere interesting. I've seen it on various TV shows like The Amazing Race and other things, and it looks like a fascinating country. It would be great to go to, but um, I have to add that to my must-travel-to list. <laughs> All right, well... We've come to the end of another edition of Coffee Time. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you haven't, please get stuff. <laughs> How diplomatic I am these days. All right, so if you've got any questions for me, leave them in the comments section below. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Lots of love to you all. Keep out of trouble and I'll talk to you later.